Question 1. When may you wait in a box junction? A. When you're stationary in a queue of traffic. B. When approaching a pelican crossing. C. When approaching a zebra crossing. D. When oncoming traffic prevents you turning right. The correct answer is D. When oncoming traffic prevents you turning right. Question 2. Which plate may appear with this road sign? A. B. C. D. The correct answer is, A. Question 3. What's the reason for traffic calming measures? A. To stop road rage. B. To make overtaking easier. C. To slow traffic down. D. To make parking easier. The correct answer is, C, to slow traffic down. Question 4. What color are the reflective studs along the left-hand edge of the motorway? A, green. B, amber. C, red. D, white. The correct answer is, C, red. Question 5. What's a rumble device designed to do? A, give directions. B, prevent cattle escaping. C, alert you to low tire pressure. D, alert you to a hazard. The correct answer is, D, alert you to a hazard. Question 6. What should you do if you have to make a journey in foggy conditions? A, follow other vehicles' tail lights closely. B, avoid using dipped headlights. C, leave plenty of time for your journey. D, keep two seconds behind the vehicle ahead. The correct answer is, C, leave plenty of time for your journey. Question 7. What must you do when you're overtaking a car at night? A, flash your headlights before overtaking. B, select a higher gear. C, switch your headlights to main beam before overtaking. D, make sure you don't dazzle other road users. The correct answer is, D, make sure you don't dazzle other road users. Question 8. You're traveling on a road that has road humps. What should you do when the driver in front is traveling more slowly than you? A, sound your horn. B, overtake as soon as you can. C, flash your headlights. D, Slow down and stay behind. The correct answer is, D, slow down and stay behind. 
Question 9. What's the purpose of the yellow lines painted across the road? A. To show a safe distance between vehicles. B. To keep the area clear of traffic. C. To make you aware of your speed. D. To warn you to change direction. The correct answer is, C, to make you aware of your speed. Question 10. What should you do when you meet an oncoming vehicle on a single track road? A. Reverse back to the main road. B. Carry out an emergency stop. C. Stop at a passing place. D. Switch on your hazard warning lights. The correct answer is, C, stop at a passing place. Question 11. The road is wet. Why would a motorcyclist steer around drain covers while they were cornering? A, to avoid puncturing the tires on the edge of the drain covers. B, to prevent the motorcycle sliding on the metal drain covers. C, to help judge the bend using the drain covers as marker points. D. To avoid splashing pedestrians on the pavement. The correct answer is, B. To prevent the motorcycle sliding on the metal drain covers. Question 12. Why should you test your brakes after this hazard? A. You'll be on slippery road. B. Your brakes will be wet. C. You'll be going down a long hill. D. You'll have just crossed a long bridge. The correct answer is B. Your brakes will be wet. Question 13. Why should you reduce your speed when you're driving or riding in fog? A. The brakes don't work as well. B. You'll be dazzled by other headlights. C. The engine will take longer to worm up. D. It's more difficult to see what's ahead. The correct answer is, D, it's more difficult to see what's ahead. Question 14. What will happen to your car when you drive up a steep hill? A, the high gears will pull better. B, the steering will feel heavier. C, overtaking will be easier. D, the engine will work harder. The correct answer is, D, the engine will work harder. Question 15. You're driving on the motorway in windy conditions. What should you do as you overtake a high-sided vehicle? A. Increase your speed. B. Be wary of a sudden gust. C. Drive alongside very closely. D. Expect normal conditions. The correct answer is, B, be wary of a sudden gust. Question 16. You're driving in fog. Why should you keep well back from the vehicle in front? 
a, in case it changes direction suddenly. b, in case its fog lights dazzle you. c, in case it stops suddenly. d, in case its brake lights dazzle you. The correct answer is, C, in case it stops suddenly. Question 17. What should you do if you park on the road when it's foggy? A. Leave parking lights switched on. B. Leave dipped headlights and fog lights switched on. C. Leave dipped headlights switched on. D. Leave main beam headlights switched on. The correct answer is A. Leave parking lights switched on. Question 18. You're driving at nights. What should you do if you're dazzled by headlights coming towards you? A. Pull down your sun visor. B. Slow down or stop. C. Flash your main beam headlights. D. Shade your eyes with your hands. The correct answer is, D, slow down or stop. Question 19. When may front fog lights be used? A, when visibility is seriously reduced. B, when they're fitted above the bumper. C, when they aren't as bright as the headlights. D, when an audible warning device is used. The correct answer is, A, when visibility is seriously reduced. Question 20. You're driving with you front fog lights switched on. What should you do if the fog has cleared? A, leave them on if other drivers have their lights on. B, switch them off as long as visibility remains good. C, flash them to warn oncoming traffic that's it's foggy. D. Drive with them on instead of your headlights. The correct answer is, B. Switch them off as long as visibility remains good. Question 21. Why should you switch off your rear fog lights when the fog has cleared? A. To allow your headlights to work. B. To stop draining the battery. C. To stop the engine losing power. D. To prevent dazzling drivers behind. The correct answer is D. To prevent dazzling drivers behind. Question 22. What will happen if you use rear fog lights in good conditions? A. They'll make it safer when towing a trailer. B. They'll protect you from larger vehicles. C. They'll dazzle other drivers. D. They'll make drivers behind keep back. The correct answer is, C, they'll dazzle other drivers. Question 23. Why would you fit chains to your wheels? A, to help prevent damage to the road surface. 
b. To help prevent wear to the tires. c. To help prevent skidding in deep snow. d. To help prevent the brakes locking. The correct answer is C, to help prevent skidding in deep snow. Question 24. How can you use your vehicle's engine to control your speed? A, by changing to a lower gear. B, by selecting reverse gear. C, by changing to a higher gear. D, by selecting neutral. The correct answer is, A, by changing to a lower gear. Question 25. Why could it be dangerous to keep the clutch down, or select neutral, for long periods of time while you're driving? A, fuel spillage will occur. B, engine damage may be caused. C, you will have less steering and braking control. D, it will wear tires out more quickly. The correct answer is, C, you will have less steering and braking control. Question 26. You're driving on an icy road. What distance from the car in front should you drive? A. 4 times the normal distance. V. 6 times the normal distance. C. 8 times the normal distance. D. 10 times the normal distance. The correct answer is, D, 10 times the normal distance. Question 27. Which lights must you use if you're driving on a well-lit motorway at night? A, use only your side lights. B, use your headlights. C, use rear fog lights. D, use front fog lights. The correct answer is, B, use your headlights. Question 28. You're driving on a motorway at night. Which lights should you have on if there are other vehicles just ahead of you? A, front fog lights. B, main beam headlights. C, side lights only. D, dipped headlights. The correct answer is, D, dipped headlights. Question 29. What will affect your vehicle's stopping distance? A, the speed limit. B, the street lighting. C, the time of day. D, the condition of the tires. The correct answer is, D, the condition of the tires. Question 30. When will you feel the effects of engine braking? A, when you only use the parking brake. B, when you're in neutral. C, when you change to a lower gear. D, when you change to a higher gear.
The correct answer is, C, when you change to a lower gear. Question 31. Which lights should you switch on when daytime visibility is poor but not seriously reduced? A. Headlights and fog lights. B. Front fog lights. C. Dipped headlights. D. Rear for lights. The correct answer is, C, dipped headlights. Question 32. Why are vehicles fitted with rear fog lights? A, to make them more visible when driving at high speed. B, to show when they've broken down in a dangerous position. C, to make them more visible in thick fog. D, to warn drivers following closely to drop back. The correct answer is, C, to make them more visible in thick fog. Question 33. There's been a heavy fall of snow. What should you consider before driving in these conditions? A whether you should fit an amber flashing beacon to your car. B. Whether you should drive without wearing your seat belt. C. Whether you should wear sunglasses to reduce the glare. D. Whether your journey is essential. The correct answer is D. Whether your journey is essential. Question 34. What should you check before you start a journey in foggy weather? A. The radiator has enough antifreeze. B. You have a warning triangle in the vehicle. C. The windows and lights are clean and clear. D. You have a mobile phone with you. The correct answer is, C, the windows and lights are clean and clear. Question 35. You've been driving in the fog. What must you do when the visibility improves? A, switch off your fog lights. B, keep your rear fog lights switched on. C, keep your fog lights switched on. D, Leave you fog lights switched on in case the fog returns. The correct answer is, A, switch off your fog lights. Question 36. Why is it dangerous to leave rear fog lights switched on after the fog has cleared? A. They may be confused with brake lights. B. The bulbs would fail. C. Electrical system could be overloaded. D. Direction indicators may not work properly. The correct answer is, A, they may be confused with brake lights. Question 37. What will happen if you hold the clutch pedal down or roll in neutral for too long? A, it will use more fuel. B, it will cause the engine to overheat. C, it will reduce your control. D, it will improve tire wear.
The correct answer is, C, it will reduce your control. Question 38. Why is bad technique to coast when you're driving downhill? A. The fuel consumption will increase. B. The engine will overheat. C. The tires will wear more quickly. D. The vehicle will gain speed more quickly. The correct answer is, D, the vehicle will gain speed more quickly. Question 39. What should you do dealing with this hazard? A, switch on your hazard warning lights. V, use a low gear and drive slowly. C, use a high gear to prevent wheel spin. D, switch on your windscreen wipers. The correct answer is, B, use a low gear and drive slowly. Question 40. Why is traveling in neutral for long distance, known as coasting, bad driving technique? A, it will cause the car to skid. B, it will make the engine stall. C, the engine will run faster. D. There won't be any engine braking. The correct answer is, D. There won't be any engine braking. Question 41. When must you use dipped headlights during the day? A. All the time you're driving. B. When you're driving along narrow streets. C. When you're driving in poor visibility. D. When you're parking. The correct answer is, C, when you're driving in poor visibility. Question 42. You're joining a motorway from a slip road. How should you deal with traffic already on the motorway? A, carry on along the hard shoulder until you see a safe gap. B, stop at the end of slip road and look for safe gap. C, Use the slip road to accelerate until you're moving much faster than the motorway traffic. D. Match your speed to traffic in the left-hand lane and filter into a safe space. The correct answer is D. Match your speed to traffic in the left-hand lane and filter into a safe space. Question 43. What's the national speed limit on motorways for cars and motorcycles? A 30 miles per hour. B 50 miles per hour. C 60 miles per hour. D 70 miles per hour. The correct answer is, D 70 miles per hour. Question 44. Which vehicles should use the left-hand lane on three-lane motorway? A. Any vehicle that isn't overtaking. B. Large vehicle only. C. Emergency vehicles only. D. Slow vehicles only.
The correct answer is, A, any vehicle that isn't overtaking. Question 45. Which vehicles aren't allowed to use the right-hand lane of a three-lane motorway? A. Small delivery vans. B. Motorcycles. C. Vehicles towing a trailer. D. Motorcycle and sidecar outfits. The correct answer is, C, vehicles towing a trailer. Question 46. Your vehicle breaks down on a motorway and you need to call for help. Why might it be better to use an emergency roadside telephone rather than a mobile phone? A, it connects you to a local garage. B, using a mobile phone will distract other drivers. C. It allows easy location by the emergency services. D. Mobile phones don't work on motorways. The correct answer is, C. It allows easy location by the emergency services. Question 47. Your vehicle broke down on the hard shoulder of a motorway, but has now been repaired. How should you rejoin the main carriageway? A. Move out onto the carriageway, then build up your speed. B. Move out onto the carriageway using your hazard warning lights. C. Gain speed on the hard shoulder before moving out onto the carriageway. D. Wait on the hard shoulder until someone flashes their headlights at you. The correct answer is, C, gain speed on the hard shoulder before moving out onto the carriageway. Question 48 you're traveling along a motorway. Where would you find a crawler or climbing lane? A. On a steep gradient. B. Before a service area. C. Before a junction. D. Along the hard shoulder. The correct answer is, A, on a steep gradient. Question 49. What do these motorway signs mean? A, they're countdown markers to a bridge. B, they're distance markers to the next telephone. C, they're countdown markers to the next exit. D, they warn of a police control ahead. The correct answer is, C, their countdown markers to next exit. Question 50. Where are amber reflective studs found on a motorway? A, between the hard shoulder and the carriageway. B, between the acceleration lane and the carriageway. C, between the central reservation and the carriageway. D, between each pair of lanes. The correct answer is, C, between the central reservation and the carriageway.